Another really nice thing about the use of styles throughout your document is that you are building in the structure of an outline. Now you don't have to use the outline, but it's there in case you need it. And in fact, it's hard to even miss this aspect of Office 365. If you hover your mouse over one of the headings that you have added to your document, so once again, here's a title. I'll just go to my styles gallery to confirm this. So there's the title style. There's a heading style, and you can see it highlighted here. And if you move the mouse next to the heading, you see this little arrow, this little gray arrow. And what this means that is that if you click it, it will make all of the text that's underneath this heading collapse, not disappear really, but just collapse. Now, if there's a white arrow, then you can give it a click and expand. So that includes all of this normal text here. And you may have even noticed that I added this text in heading two. So if I make this heading two level, then it too will get an arrow. So there we go with hiding and expanding the text that's underneath heading two and hiding and expanding the text under heading one. Now notice how this works, that if I have heading one, then heading two, then in terms of the outline navigation, that if I collapse heading one, heading two is a subheading of heading one, and so all of that text goes away. That's one way to navigate throughout your document. You can expand and collapse this text. That's not really practical for most documents, or at least not most documents in my experience, but you can still use these for navigational purposes. And to do that, you want to make sure that you are viewing the navigation pane. There's a couple of keyboard shortcuts to do this as well, but we'll learn these as we continue on. But I just want to introduce the topic first here. So now you can see in the navigation pane that I have these headings. Now I can navigate to pages and search results by clicking on these things up here and these are the things that we'll continue talking about. But for now, if I just make sure that headings is selected, I should be able to go through my document and then navigate to different sections or different chapters by just simply clicking on the headings in the navigation pane. So there is heading two, there is heading one. You can of course see the difference. Now, if you're using the Macintosh version of Office 365, then it looks fairly similar. Again, I have a heading here, but I don't have the ability to expand and collapse. What looks similar is the navigation pane. So uh, even though I have this heading one, and then I'll add some text in here, heading two and make this heading two. So again, I don't see the live preview and I don't see these little arrows that let me expand and collapse the text. But if I view the navigation pane, then I can still go through my document and click on a heading. And this first heading here is really the de facto title of my document. I don't have a title, I just have a heading, but I can navigate from heading to heading using this outline view of my document in the navigation pane, what's called the document map. Again, I have some other options here, thumbnails pane to go to different pages. But in this case here, when I'm using the headings in the style sets, I can use these as a navigational tool. In this lesson, we will work with page numbers. And this shouldn't present too much of a challenge because of the setup work that we've done with adding headers and footers to our document. So we'll start out just by simply adding a page number. And you do that by going to the insert menu and then come over to this header and footer grouping. And then you've probably noticed this from previous lessons in this module, but you can click on page number. And then from the top of the page, bottom of the page, page margin selection, you just make your selection. So if you click on top of page, you can add a plain number, you can add a whole accent bar, so you have several different choices that you can make. Uh, I'll just add an accent bar, and that's what it looks like. Uh, if you want to add page numbers to the bottom of the page, you then click on this footer drop-down. And 
you can scroll through the list and do some automated ones like this one. So this includes two fields here, both the author name and this page number field itself. Now if you want to remove page numbers, then you can either do one of two things. You can go to the footer and you can remove the footer. So if you've added the footer using that menu, that's fine. If you go to the page number menu and remove page numbers, then you should remove the page numbers as well. So my recommendation when you are working with page numbers is don't overcomplicate things. You can either start by setting your cursor where you want that page number to be. Remember that you've got these tab stops either in the header section and the footer section. But really you can bypass most of that stuff by just remembering to click this drop down. And here notice that it appears in a couple of different places. Right now I'm in the design tab in the header and footer tools grouping that is active when I'm working with my header and footer. Or I can come back to insert. So if I close this, insert, either which way you get there is fine with me. Of course, doesn't matter how you accomplish the task. So uh, the current position can be used as well. You can use page margins and add page numbers to the margin of your document. But again, let's just keep things simple right now and let's add a page number centered at the bottom of the page. Now, if we're on this page that is titled Part 1, Chapter 1, and the page number at the bottom of the page is page number 2. And that's perhaps what we would expect because I'm on page 2 of 75, the status bar can confirm my page number selections. In fact, let's do one other thing just to again show you how this works. Go back up to page number and bottom of page and this time when you click to display this, let's do the page X of Y. So here you have three bold numbers, let's just use this one, bold numbers two, which will put this in the center of the page. Now what I want you to notice is that you have the same formatting options that you do with any other line of text or any other character that you're working with. So I can select the entire block of text by clicking and dragging over everything, go back up to the Home tab and use my font choices here to get the text to match the font that's already there. You'll also see that you have two areas that are shaded and these are fields and you typically don't want to select those, delete them, and then enter in a number manually. The nice thing about the fields, as I hit Control Z a couple of times, the nice thing about the fields is that this little gray shading behind it indicates that it will be updated automatically. So if I add pages to this 75, let me try this again, to this 75 page document, then this might not be page two anymore, or this might not be 75 pages, maybe 76 pages, maybe 74 pages. But when I start to just simply navigate around through these page numbers, and I'm doing this just by using the arrow keys on my keyboard, when I get to the field itself, it automatically shades it. When I get to this field, it automatically shades it. In fact, you might notice this, if you try to go back and forth, that if I just hit the arrow key once, it doesn't even want to go, it doesn't even want to keep going. So you have to hold down the arrow key, just kind of a little quirk that I've discovered as you um, are, are moving the cursor with the arrow keys across a field with more than one character. So keep that in mind. So we've now added page numbers to our document when we're done we can close the header and footer. Okay, let's take our page numbering adventures one step further here and let's format those page numbers. So when we left off from the previous lesson, we have this footer and we have page X of Y. Now let's go ahead and make a quick change to that by going back up to the page number and bottom of page. Now what's going to happen if I change my mind and use one of these instant page numbers as we saw with the header and footers, when we use one of these instant blocks, it replaces what's there. So the formatting needs to be redone because this is not uh, matching the text that's in my document. So I want to change the font to Times New Roman, and that's fine. 
Now maybe I also want to go to the position area up here in the design tab of header and footer tools and move it a little bit closer to the very bottom of the page so I can do that. Now that we've got that done, let's turn our focus to the main thrust of this lesson, which is to go to the header and footer section in the design tab and click on page number and then format these page numbers. So now you have the option to choose a different number format. This may or may not be checked by default. I think it depends on what you clicked on the last time you had this open. But the most straightforward way to use this is to just pick a different number format. And so you can choose A, B, and C. You actually have several choices to choose from here. So maybe if you are creating a page numbering scheme for, say, the beginning of a book, the front matter of a book, you may want to use Roman numeral. So you can click on OK, and now you see that this title page is Roman numeral 1, Roman numeral 2, and so on and so on. And all 75 pages are now going to be given Roman numerals. If I change my mind, go back up here, format the page numbers, I can choose a more collegial looking dash number and then dash, something like that. Whether or not you choose the chapter number will have to do with if your chapters are starting with a particular style and then you can choose a style from your drop down here. Uh, that gets into the use of a heading which is not the same as the header so I don't want you to confuse those two things. It has to do, as I cancel out of this, it has to do with the formatting that you're using uh, up in this section of your document, or at least the, the, when you have a, a new page or a new section that uses a specific style. So really for now, that's a little bit beyond what we're talking about in this lesson. Go back to page number, format page numbers, and what I also want to show you is that you do have the ability to not only choose whatever number format you want, within reason, you can also start at a particular spot. So you can start at 1, you can start at 5 if you want to. So if you know, for example, that there's going to be 4 or 5 pages of front matter and you're picking up in the next section, then you can start at any number that you specify. So now I click on OK and now this title page is given the number 5 and then this first page of the first chapter is given the number six and so on. So we still have in the status bar, we still have 75 pages in the document. But if I go to the very end of the document, which I'll do with scrolling, it gets me to page 79, not 75. So sometimes that's exactly what you want when you have got the numbering formatted the way you desire. Go ahead and close your header and footer. In this lesson, we will look at using a section and or a first page header. So if you followed along so far, you now have a 75 page document with some page numbers that have been added and formatted and they look something like this. Now let's go ahead and sort of reset the table and go to our insert tab and come over to page number, format the page numbers, and make sure that everything starts at 1. So once that is done, what you should see is on this title page, you see uh, that the page number is 1, and on this first page of chapter 1, the page number is 2. A lot of times when you have the first page of a section or a longer document, you have some kind of title information like this, and you don't necessarily want to see any of the header or footer information. And of course, this would apply to headers and footers as well, because we're just dealing with a specific kind of header and footer. So if that is the case, first make sure that you are editing the footer. So here I am editing the footer. And you can see up here that I do have the choice to create a different first page. And for this, I'll even scroll up to the different first page, set my cursor in the footer on the first page, and have a different first page. That's all I have to do. I don't have to select the text. I don't have to delete the text, nothing like that. Just click on that checkbox in your options, 
in that design tab that appears when dealing with the header and footer. And now when I close it, you should see that this title page looks nice and clean like a title page should, and that part one begins with page number two. Now let's go back and kind of reset the table here by going to the footer and editing it. And again, this can be done with a double click. But this time, let's go back up and do this. We'll uncheck this once again so that we should see the page number appear as I originally did. Another thing that happens in longer documents is that they can be broken up into multiple sections. And sometimes you want a different header and footer to be used in each different section in your document. Sometimes you identify that you're working with a different part or a different chapter or a different section. What do we do? Well, first let's go to this title page. Let's set our cursor at the very end of this second epigram here. And we will go to the layout tab of the ribbon this time. And we are going to add a break and we're going to add a section break. Now, do we want to add a next page, continuous, even, or odd? Well, let's just kind of click around and see what happens. We always have our friend the undo key. So what happens if we do a next page break? Well, it's obeying our command, and it is inserting, it's starting this next section on a new page. And this can be great if you're building the document as you go, but it can be a little tricky if you're working with a document like this that's already been built and is already 20, 30, 100 pages long. So I'll undo that and what we're looking for instead is just set your cursor at the very top of the title of this part one, chapter one. So go to the very first character in what will become our second section of the document and this time click on the breaks and then insert a continuous section break. So now our document has two separate sections. Now, can you see them? No, you cannot see them. What you have to do instead is go to the Home tab, show the non-printing characters, and now you can see that a section break continuous has been added. So this text is in the, this container is one section, and this container starts the second section. Now, let's do something like this. Let's go to the very bottom of this first page of this first chapter. So the first page of my second section. And insert page number in the header and footer grouping. And on the bottom of the page, we'll do, let's do X of Y. So we'll grab this, scroll down a little bit, and there they are. There's page X of Y. We'll change this to page X of Y. So now if I close the header and footer and go back to the title page, what you're seeing here is that I have this same footer that is in both sections. Give this a double click to just jump right into editing mode, and you can see that this is the footer of section one, this is the header of section two, and if I keep scrolling down, this is the footer of section two. You also see something very significant, same as previous. So now I'm going to click to set my cursor in the first page of the second section footer, and I'm going to make this go away. I'm gonna do that by using this design tab and this is the button we're looking for. In the navigation grouping, it's linked to previous. So by default, all of your headers and footers link. It assumes, Word assumes, that you want to use the same header and footer in every section of your document. You have to tell Word, stop doing that. And so let's do that right now. Let's not link to the previous section. So now if I close the header and footer and go back up to this first title page, Notice what's going on. Now I don't automatically remove it, but if I go and edit it, I should now be able to just do the page number removal. So if I just remove the page number from the footer of section one, close the header and footer, let's see what our results are. Indeed, we have a different footer, and keep in mind this could be a different header. The same principles apply, but I have a different footer 
in Section 2 than I have in Section 1 of this document.